Okay, we're back at day two of Node Summit. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, and we're proud to be at Node Summit for day two of live interviews, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Yesterday, day one, we interviewed, uh, we've got about 20, 25 interviews of great entrepreneurs, developers, executives, really the thought leaders and the folks really building this new community. Um, and they're all geeks, but they're all in business to make money and, and uh, do some good for the world in the development world and build great apps. Day two is a little bit different here at Node Summit. This is what they call the Node Jam, and Node Jam is where all the startups who are really playing with Node and really commercializing some of their ideas and visions into product. Um, and so we've got great teams of people, great product opportunities, and the social, uh, community, if you will, is all here, and it's really exciting, and I'm proud to be here with theCUBE. theCUBE is SiliconAngle.tv's flagship telecast. We go out to the events, and we set up our HD studio. We talk to the most important, smartest people we can find, and we don't care if they're entrepreneurs, developers, executives. If they got knowledge, we want to extract that and share that with you, and uh, we're proud to be here. Um, and it's going to be exciting, so today's going to be Pretty much a laid back, pretty much chill environment. We're going to talk uh, candidly with the entrepreneurs, what are they working on, and some of the hot trends and products we're seeing. So our first guest um, is Matt Rainey, who is the co-founder, founder of Voxer, and I'm joined with Clint Finley, who's managing editor of our new DevOpsAngle.com, our section on SiliconANGLE. Going into the Node world and understanding the, the operational and engineering side of it. Uh, Clint, welcome back. Matt, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks. First time in, good, good to have you. I'm going to be a little loose, so let's just jump right in. You uh, have the company Voxer. It's been very popular. Um, as they say, you know, Naval from AngelList is here. He talks about social proof. Uh, you have some social proof. You have people using your app. So tell us about Voxer for the folks out there. What is it? What are some of the product features? And then share with us just some highlights of the uh, success that you've had just recently. Sure, sure. So Voxer is, you know, it's, we call it a walkie-talkie, and it's sort of, we're, we're trying to make a, a modern, like, more useful way to do, like, walkie-talkie kind of behaviors. Like, the, um, the, the issue that we're coming up, you know, that we come up against now that we have these mobile phones everywhere, like, everybody's got a mobile phone, it's like, you can have a phone call anytime you like, but do you actually want that? Like, increasingly, no. People find phone calls are, you know, they interrupt them. Um, it's kind of a pain when you get a phone call. And so what we're trying to do is um, get sort of the etiquette of text messaging, but uh, let you use your voice to do that. So it doesn't interrupt, but if you still want to be live, you can still be live. And it sounds complicated, but I mean, it's just like a walkie-talkie that works better. Before we get into some of the technical coolness of, of what you guys are doing with Node and everything else, which we're going to go deep dive in, Clint and I were playing with your app uh, uh, on Monday night, and it's really cool. And for folks out there who want to try to understand this product, it's basically a text message with voice. And for the older folks out there like me uh, who know about Nextel, um, and you see people push to talk and then you can just chat uh, with a talk like a, at a construction site or when you had people in the service business, that, that was a really great product. Uh, Nextel pioneered that kind of push to talk concept. Here it's a little bit different. You're doing essentially a voice message that's a text message kind of thing to oversimplify it. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, it is voice. Like, it's not transcription. It's not converting your voice into text, but it's letting you use your voice with the social etiquette of text. Like, it's not interrupting you, but, like, voice is really nice. It conveys nuance and subtlety and, and just character and emotion that you just can't get with text. And so people do want to use their voice, we think, um, and, you know, not just always type everything. Um, you know, voice is a useful way to talk to people, and it just doesn't fit in the sort of modern, you know, kind of, uh, you know, w with the etiquette of, of modern mobile telephony. Yeah, I mean, we know, we have the cube and we have obviously uh, audio and, and video, but, you know, I get taken out of context a lot of my blog posts when I do a lot of tongue in cheek and people are like, what are you saying? Get offended. So voice gives you that natural feeling of that. Right. Um, and the other thing uh, that Clint and I were talking about uh, when we were talking to some of the developers on that Monday night uh, meetup, uh, Thirsty Bear, was... Um, a lot of the times we get hyped up in products in Silicon Valley and developers and it's like an echo chamber of, you know, hype and, and fun sometimes. Um, but really, the, when you have, when we hear average people say, oh, I love this app, right. um, it's amazing. So Clint, share your story about uh, your friend uh, um, who kind of showed you and said, you got to get on this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I have a friend who, uh, well, you know, I, I, I've been hearing about Boxer for uh, over a year now because you guys are using Node.js and React, and so, you know, the stuff that I've been following. 
Uh, but then I started hearing about it from from my friends who from your, aren't your non technical yeah friends, from non technical right? people <laughs> yeah. and they're yeah they're they're fanatical about it because oh, uh, cool. I, I had known about the app but I'd never actually even downloaded it and right. so now suddenly I'm hearing not from no JS evangelists but from uh, you know like print reporters and from um, uh, airline travel workers of like oh, right. oh this awesome. is great I love I love to use this app while I'm driving because I don't have to. Right, look at right, it and not right. have to touch it. So, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely gaining a lot of traction outside of the tech community. Uh, and I understand you've, uh, you've hit some uh, milestone numbers recently. And yeah, well, so b before I deflect that question, let me also uh, just say that uh, hearing something like that, like what you said, like how oh, people are telling you about it, like, as a person who writes software, like that is the absolute great. I mean, that is why we write software. So it's it's super great. <laughs> so um, I just. Uh, all right, still, while you're all happy now, tell us uh, right. euphorically the like, numbers. It's it's definitely it's a, it, well here here's what you can see. You can look in the um, you can go to the iOS app store and you can look in the social networking category and you can see which has the usual suspects. Um, and you can see which position we are in and which position we've been in for what, almost a month, um, which is to say above Facebook. And I'm not to say, I mean, everybody's on Facebook, like no surprise there. But the surprise is we have been above Facebook for a long time. Yeah. And like lots and lots of people are downloading this app um, in, in this country and around the world. It's very cool. Congratulations. I think you got lightning in a bottle. And I think uh, when we look back on this Cube interview, we'll be like, wow, that company really went on a <laughs> rocket ship. Remember us small guys when you're uh, right. famous. Right. Uh, but let's talk about the team. Let's talk about you guys up there. And you guys said you write code. And you're really uh, happy about seeing the results manifest itself. Talk about the team that you guys have up on your, within Voxer and, and talk about some of the talent you have. Sure. So, I mean, we have, um, you know, we're, we're primarily engineering focused. You know, we have. Um, we have a lot of people uh, wor working on Node. We have um, some sort of Node celebrities. We have Danny Coates who did uh, Node Inspector. Um, we have we have Daniel Shaw uh, who has done uh, various things with uh, MongoDB and just well known in the community. Um, we're we're looking to recruit more uh, you know more people to work on Node, be, be they Node celebrities or not. But um, yeah, we've got uh, and then we've got you know some people working on on iOS and some people working on on Android and you know we're always looking for more. Cool. Well, let's talk about Node. We're at the Node Summit. You guys have a lot of challenges. Uh, we were talking last night with David Floyer, our, our chief IO researcher at wikibon.org, and we were talking about IO, and it's a challenge. And we were talking about latency, and it's a constant chase, mm -hmm. the latency problem. So before we get into the latency um, deep conversation, let's talk about the challenges with your uh, application, and then where Node really came in to help you. I mean, because, uh, you were talking about the old ways of doing things. You know, you, you nail something down in a process and you have it and then you, you kind of don't fix it. So talk about some of the latency issues around and what Node does for you. Yeah, so we have kind of a, we have a funny sort of architecture in that we're trying to be as low latency as possible. Like we're trying to be, be absolutely live as, you know, absolutely as fast as we can uh, get data through our system. We want to do that. But we also need to make a copy of it in case you want to come in later, if you have another device or you're offline at the time or, or whatever. And so that has been basically like the, the big win with Node is that we can, we can shuffle data through our system incredibly quickly. We can hold open lots and lots of connections. Um, either be they very uh, short-lived, very low latency connections, or we can keep much longer lived ones open to a database or, you know, or, or you know, processes writing to disk drives somehow. Um, being able to hold open all of those connections and has has been crucial to us being able to kind of scale this up and keep delivering low latency um, that, that we need to do. So it's it's been a big win. Clint, what's your take on this? I mean, so you're following Node, you've been following these guys. Um, what's your take on all this? Uh, well, actually, I, I would rather answer that with another question. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what role has has Node and and the rest of your stack because there's other interesting things in the stack besides Node. Uh, how has that helped you scale? Because uh, you you've been growing so fast, uh, and I can't help but think that you know some of your success has been your your own scalability. If people started downloading the app and it wasn't working, you know the the adoption, I, I imagine probably wouldn't really be there. But yeah, some people, people uh, have it. criticized uh, <laughs> yeah. Node as, as a 
sort of uh, premature optimization. Mm. Uh, yep. So uh, I, I'm wondering about your, you know, you have what seems like a really scalable stack, and how, how has that helped you? So, well, yeah, I mean, as you say, like, if we couldn't have scaled it up, obviously it wouldn't work, and then people wouldn't be able to use it. And so we were able to, so... Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, Node doesn't scale. Like, you know, you need something that can scale. I mean, it does. Like, nothing scales by itself. Like, you have to do some work. I mean, even if it, the work is setting up your, your you know, web app behind a load balancer, I mean, it doesn't, nothing scales by itself. And so the, the work that we put into our application logic made it so that it scales with Node. The, the sort of... The, the real reason, like, to the first part of, of your, your question is, like, the, the, the thing that wins for us is HTTP, like, using HTTP for everything. And Node in HTTP, in Node, HTTP is a first-class citizen, and it's effortless to do HTTP, and it's effortless to do JSON. And so that's what we use as a protocol, and that's worked out really well. And because Node does so well at this, we are able to build up several kind of service tiers, you know, several layers of our of our application stack on the back end that all talk to each other with JSON over HTTP. And likewise with Reoc, that has been a big win because we can talk to Reoc with HTTP and Node does that really, really well. And that's that's been a big reason that we were able to able to scale this up. Okay. So what's next for you guys now? Obviously, um, give us a status of the company. Where are you guys at in terms of employees, funding, and all that good stuff? So, so we're in, in the process of, of, of raising some more money. We obviously, now that we have a lot more users, um, it's a lot more expensive. <laughs> so um, we, are, we are trying to, to And you're hosting this. all your own stuff. You're not in the cloud? Yeah, or are you on Amazon? In, in or? the cloud. I mean, what does that yeah, mean? We're <laughs> exactly. We are, you're not using Amazon, are you? We're not using Amazon. We started using um, Amazon because you're supposed to, and um, we could not get the latency numbers that we needed. It was too unpredictable and too crazy. And so uh, we went to SoftLayer and we got bare metal machines there, and that was fine. It was really good value for, for your money. Uh, for our money, but um, the problem was at the end of the day, Linux. Um, we have these weird I/O mysteries, these weird latency mysteries, and we couldn't figure out what they were. So we are actually moving our whole deal to Joint uh, right now, and so we've already in the in the parts of our operation that are on Joint, we've already been able to find some just crazy, crazy, just impossible uh, performance problems that we were able to kind of suss out with uh, the magic of, of Dtrace. Cool. So, in terms of funding, have you taken funding so far? Self-funded? It's been it's been self-funded. Right. So, far. you're looking for a round of financing? Yeah, yeah. We're 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 in the process right now. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to get a lot of term sheets. <laughs> um, I definitely invest in you guys. I really love what you guys are doing. I think it's exciting. I think you're pushing the envelope, and I think the app is just dead simple, great. So, uh, and I think it's got a lot of headroom. Uh, possibly video, maybe. Oh yeah, abs video, you absolutely. Know. I mean, the the infrastructure supports video. We just haven't put it into the clients yet. Great. Um, so, I mean, you know, what else is coming soon is, like, browser client. Like, there'll be a browser version of Voxer. It's going to be awesome. Um, and it will sort of sync up with all of your content, you know, kind of like, like Gmail, you know. Like, you can get your stuff from any computer that has a web browser. It works the same with our, with our mobile phones. It's just usually your mobile phone's more personal. You don't usually share your mobile phone. But all, you can have multiple devices, and it all syncs already. And so we're going to add a browser version. And... Uh, probably some kind of a follower model. So I mean, right now we're we're symmetric like like Facebook. What about uh, like integration with Skype or something like that? Yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. I mean, the thing that Skype does is they do really good phone calls um, over over IP networks, and our thing isn't really phone calls. It's kind of somewhere in between, like phone calls and and text messaging. And maybe maybe some. I mean, yeah, Skype has I, really I good audio. Just, I just think about it because. Uh, because I, I live in Skype a lot for... Yeah, me, me too, I, honestly. And it, so too. <laughs> I was just thinking it might be nice to be able to get my Boxer messages in Skype. So not not calls, but just get the notifications and be able to play oh, them right, right, right in right, Skype. Right. Yeah, I mean, so soon we'll probably also... Uh, I mean, I'm not sure when it's going to happen in the, in the long-term vision, but we want to expose an API, you know, and so then... Eh, maybe we would do that. Maybe somebody will will uh, mash up uh, Skype and Voxer and and get you get you what you're looking for there. Um, but yeah, I, I hope to to open up an API so that people can build all kinds of interesting voice apps um, using our our backend. 
What are you guys thinking in terms of like, you know, in terms of infrastructure side of it, in terms of, um, we talked to the CEO of Bleco um, and Rich Grenta, and they've told me that everything's an SSD for them. They're running a pretty mm. cool search engine and, and they're really doing a great job over there. Are you looking at the flash and is your architect, do you have any purpose built kind of hardware? Or are you going to go off the shelf and get like HP Dell boxes or, or you know, that kind of thing? So, Right now, we use what, I don't even really know what kind of computers Commodity they are. Gear, right? it's just <laughs> yeah, I mean, gear. we ask no our hosting provider to give us computers, and then they do. But no, no special architecture in terms of I.O. on the hardware side. We have, I mean, some, one of our React clusters is on SSDs, um, and, the, and another one is on, a, you know, big spinning disk arrays. Like, because we don't ever throw away messages. We, we let you keep your messages forever, and so that's a lot of storage. It uh, doesn't quite make sense to keep all that on SSD. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, can, so those are those are in an ever growing collection of disk arrays. Yeah, you guys are a good prospect for the EMCs of the world out there. Yeah, HP EMC. <laughs> so, uh, great. Except uh, m maybe not because we're using React to scale out our storage. And not, <laughs> we're not using a big SAN. Like yeah. we're just using individual computers to add more storage. We just get another computer with more storage, and yeah. React spreads it out. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, well, Matt, congratulations on the great app, Voxer. Go to the App Store, download it, check it out. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a big hit uh, with uh, everyone from kids up to adults, travelers. And, but no uh, further. No, the whole, the whole world. I mean, it's <laughs> okay. a global web, right? I mean, you know, you add in social capabilities yeah. like following, you can really create, you know, I mean, GroupMe's been a great app with, uh, you know, look at the shared, you mm -hmm. know, text messaging. It's just a matter of time before voice becomes that. And we come back to voicemail again. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, we're here inside the cube uh, with Matt, the uh, co-founder. Founder or co-founder? Co-founder. Co-founder of Voxer. Check it out, uh, voxer.com. And uh, check out the app. It's growing faster than Facebook and Twitter uh, in terms of the iStore. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I made that up uh, and implied I, that uh, from the I conversation. Th I think you could actually conclude that, but the algorithm is secret for the, yeah. I, the App Store rankings. But yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll dig into it. We'll be following that. We'll do some investigative reporting. Congratulations. I, Thanks I will so watch much. That. I'll watch that. <laughs> Thanks for coming inside <laughs> Thanks. the Cube. Okay, Matt Rainey with uh, Voxer, uh, with Clint Finley, and we'll be right back in uh, five minutes with more interviews.